So, let us briefly recall what we were doing in the last lecture. <coughs> so, <coughs> we were looking at the development process of a database uh, system. So, basically it has these uh, steps that we need to first collect the requirements uh, for the system <coughs> and then there are two kinds of requirements I was, uh, that first thing is that we need to figure out what are the important entities and associations between them that we need to <coughs> represent and then tell us about the uh, various operations that need to be performed as part of this running the enterprise. <coughs> Okay, so, these requirements need to be collected and then we convert this into a representational level uh, data model which is this relational data model and choose the RDBMS, choose means, uh, so there are lots of uh, providers of RDBMS right now Oracle DB2 and Microsoft uh, SQL Server, so many uh, RDBMS systems are there. So, we can choose one of them and then create the, the database and convert this functional requirements that we were talking about into what are called application programs. So, these are uh, programs in high level language that use SQL in order to interact with the database system and modif modify the database system as per requirements of this. Uh, functional uh, functionality of the uh, enterprise. <coughs> the day to day operations of the enterprise are captured by these functional requirements. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so in this uh, lecture, we will focus a lot on the various subsystems of a uh, database management uh, system. Okay. It is a as I was telling you the RDBMS is a pretty complex piece of software and it has lots of these components, lots of various uh, components. So, we will look at each of these uh, components a little bit uh, in detail. Uh, in some sense this, this picture that I am going to show here um, gives you uh, a complete uh, you know kind of introduction to this entire course because this has uh, the, the various components of this particular uh, system architecture are going to be covered in various modules of this course and so this kind of gives you a, a complete introduction to the entire set of uh, the, the, the entire set of modules that are going to come up in this uh, in this course. Okay. Now, <coughs> The various things in this picture. Is this picture clear? Yeah. Visible? Okay, at the at this uh, place, we have a picture that shows a disk. So this is the disk storage. So this is where ultimately the the database and all its related information is going to be stored. Uh, in fact, there can be several databases that will be stored. So we can roughly divide that into uh, metadata, data and log. We will talk about log a little while later. Uh, basically, metadata is the, is the schema information about the database system, it all the structure information, the names of relations, names of attributes, their data types, other constraints that they are, um, uh, they are required to satisfy all that information is this metadata and then we have actual data that will be the various tuple instances that are there as part of the uh, relations all actual pieces of uh, data names, roll numbers and things like that all those phone numbers etcetera all the various pieces of data. Uh, so, so th those th that is the data. And then we also have log, we will talk about it a little later. Now, at this end, we will let us let us focus here. Uh, first, we will try to understand as to how the system, a, a particular database system will be set up and then how it will be used, right. 
So, we will first focus on how to set it up. In order to set it up, uh, just now we looked at you know the, the steps involved in setting up a database system. right? So, after the first step, we have all the requirements in our hands, all the requirements in our hands and typically these requirements are going to be represented in a high level conceptual level model like an ER diagram and then we sit with the stakeholders, engage them in a discussion and explain clearly the, the requirements as we have understood from the discussions and get a go ahead from the stakeholders. This is a very important step because we need to have the clarity about the requirements before we proceed to build the uh, system. If there is some ambiguity in the, uh, in the requirements and we have not been able to have a clear discussion and convey what we have understood about their requirements and if there is some misunderstanding at this stage, then it is likely to affect the design of the inf entire information system and then might actually cause a lot of problems later on when we build the system. So, for any engineering uh, enterprise, designing is, design is a very important thing. right? So, so, at the design stage, we must pay a lot of attention and then uh, engage uh, with the uh, end user and uh, get clarity uh, into the whole process and clearly uh, convey what we have understood and whether they have understood what we have, what we have understood clearly and all this uh, we should ensure and get a go ahead from the uh, end users. So, and once we do that, we typically convert that into convert the information that we have gathered into the representational data model as, as I was just now telling which is the relational data model. Of course, once we convert that into relational data model, the RDBMS will come into picture. So, RDBMS as you all know provides you or, or implements the SQL standard. So, implements the SQL standard. So, SQL provides you what are called commands that are DDL commands, data definition sub language or we do not uh, you know, this is part of SQL itself. Earlier, it used to be called data definition sub language. So, basically, there are statements like uh, you, you would be already uh, heard about these uh, uh, statements like create table is a uh, command using which you actually create the relation, etcetera. So, these are these are the kind of commands that are part of the DDL sub language part of the SQL standard and using that we will lay out, we will actually set up the skeletal structure of the relational database system. So, all the relations that need to be present will all be designed and then all. So, this there is a DDL and command processor that will take up this uh, set of uh, SQL commands that will create the uh, relational structure and and convert that into lower level details and then actually uh, you know uh, set up the required information structures back in the, in the disk. So, so you can see that the, the uh, RDBMS uh, has a, a compiler in it. So, it, it has to understand SQL right. So, uh, there is an SQL uh, compiler uh, that has to be part of the RDBMS system and SQL uh, statements will be converted internally into uh, convert uh, has to be processed and they have to be converted into appropriate information structures on the on the disk. Okay, so, that is the uh, who does this? Uh, it is the uh, database administrators. The database administrator uh, will, uh, will set up this skeletal structure of the database and then we will see how the database will get used. Uh, okay. So, right now there is there is not any data in the in the database just the uh, structure as to what are the, the all the tables are kind of empty. 
but we have all the table structures and the constraints that need to be satisfied by these columns uh, and, and uh, 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 these details are all in place. Uh, we will of course, uh, later study in detail as to how exactly this, uh, uh, these uh, commands look like. <coughs> okay. Now, now let us go to the top portion of this uh, picture here. The typical use of the information systems that you would have encountered when you, you know, interact uh, with various systems in the real world is that there are people who will, you know, gather some important pieces of information from us and then, you know, interact with the information system and provide some service for us. Like for example, when you go to the library, they will ask you, okay, where is your ID card and what is the book that you want to borrow? Okay, these are the two pieces of information they will ask and then they will key in this information and then say that, okay, yes, this issue, uh, this particular, I mean, the fact that this book has been issued to you is now recorded and so you can take this book, right. So, what, what they are essentially doing here is use a, use the information system, but then they are interacting with that through a, a graphical user interface, feeding some parameter values and invoking some program inside that. Okay. So, these programs are what I have just now told you as these are the ones that are called as application programs. The application programs are the ones that, that kind of provide all the functionality that is required for the day to day operations of the enterprise. Okay. So, if you focus on library again, so the various operations that it is involved on a day to day basis would be enrolling users issuing books, recording returns, collecting fines, procuring books, recording that a book has uh, arrived, etcetera. So, these are the various things, right. So, for each of these things, there is going to be a high level program that will be written and it is written in either C, Java, C plus plus etcetera and as part of that program it will somehow invoke SQL and interact with the database in order to send those in pieces of information that it has collected to the database. Okay. So, so that is why application programs uh, go through an application program compiler. So, so now these application programs have SQL inside it, right. So, obviously, uh, it has to be pre-processed, so that you can remove all the SQL commands from it and then send the remaining program to the usual, uh, you know, C compiler or C++ compiler. Let us, let us stick to one language, let us say C and then uh, the program has to be compiled. But then, uh, you know, there are these uh, embedded SQL commands. So, obviously, uh, these SQL has to be replaced by appropriate function calls, so that the program becomes complete, right. So, these function who provides the function, uh, who I mean the, the RDBMS vendor, RDBMS vendor would have provided these implemented function interface and these functions have to be then used and then the program has to be compiled into an executable thing, okay. So, the user, the application program developers, they are called application programmers. The application programmers would use a high level language like C and use SQL and submit that uh, thing as a, uh, as a uh, application program. But then the RDBMS system has to use a uh, uh, normal uh, C compiler and then the, the, uh, the, the, the functions that have been uh, provided by the RDBMS. So, RDBMS vendors would, would, would supply, uh, up supply these library functions that will be useful for implementing these SQL commands that are used inside the 
post bankwish programs so these so together this will be compiled into a compiled application program and you keep them uh, in in store in, in so to say okay so these are also kind of uh, you know uh, stored inside on the on the disk as stored programs right so when when these people behind the counters are operating what they will what they are essentially doing is invoking one of these application programs and supply the parameters to them so we will use them uh, so we will uh, you know uh, so we can probably even call them as parametric users so they, they basically uh, use the system by simply supplying the parameters they they probably uh, don't have uh, a full idea about what the system how the system actually works and things like that they don't need to actually these are the people who uh, uh, are operate uh, 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 you know operating the system okay so when they do that this compiled application programs have to be taken up by this rdbms runtime system and it has to actually uh, run the required uh, sql uh, functions through this backend and then ensure that the data on the disk changes appropriately right so all that is involved in this particular chain of activity now <coughs> uh, okay let's now look at uh, we will probably come back to this again but let's now look at this what is this this is this is uh, apart from the commands that are put inside an application programs usually the database management database system will have a another interface through which we can write and submit through which we can submit sql commands sql uh, sql queries like for example you might suddenly uh, you are, let's say we are uh, you know uh, how many number of computer science books have been issued out in the last one month somebody wants to know okay and so uh, so the this sql later we will see will provide you the the appropriate know language means to translate this into a query and that sql query will have to be managed by the i mean it will have to be put through a query compiler and then uh, appropriately run on the data so that we get the results back and then give give them the results to the analyst that who is analyzing as to the usage of the uh, inf uh, of the a database uh, you know, how how uh, <coughs> okay now here is another interesting thing um, sql as we will later see is a declarative language is a largely declarative language so what do we mean by declarative language is that it gives you a way of specifying what you want without actually telling how that information has to be obtained okay it gives us such a kind of a you know mechanism so that you can specify what is the information that you want from the information from the database system without exactly specifying how that information has to be you know uh, actually put together from the database that information that you are looking for might be actually lying in multiple uh, relations multiple files and things like that so those are level, lower level uh, those are other details but you know uh, sql gives you a way of indicating as to how uh, 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 yeah indicating what exactly is required without telling how it has to be obtained 
Now, the how part of wool obviously is important. So, what exactly happens internally is that SQL queries will be converted into what are called relational algebraic expressions. They will be converted internally into relational algebraic expressions. So, we will when we go to the relational data model, we will study what this relational algebra is all about. But at this stage, we can just understand that it is something like a arithmetic expression. We have a algebraic relational algebraic expression. And when you run execute the relational algebraic expression, we will get the results that we want we are looking for. Okay. Now, the reason why we actually use relational algebraic representation for the queries is that once we have a algebraic expression, you know, uh, just like an arithmetic expression can be can be executed in multiple ways, right? If you have a, a bunch of arithmetic operators and then there is a um, arithmetic expression, you can imagine that there are multiple ways of actually evaluating that, right? You might evaluate this uh, operator first, then uh, probably uh, operate a sub expression later first and then etcetera. There are multiple orders in which you can evaluate the expression. In a similar way, once you convert this into a relational algebraic expression, there will be multiple ways of executing that and some of them will be fast, some of them will be slow and things like that. And so, there is an opportunity for us to look at these possibilities of running that uh, evaluating that expression and optimize the optimize the the expression in such a way that we will lose we will use as small amount of time as possible to actually get the information. So, the query optimizer the query optimizer module that is there here essentially contributes to this activity that it will focus on this relational um, algebra expressions that are coming as a result of this SQLs that are being SQL queries that are being submitted here and then uh, it will see whether there is an opportunity for uh, improving the uh, in, uh, what is the plan in uh, using which we can run that particular query and then it will give it as to that particular method to the runtime system. So, that it can actually run the uh, query in that particular way using the uh, data in the database and then give back the results. Okay. So, that is, uh, so we are going to focus, uh, we are going to study this uh, relational algebra and then uh, how exactly this relational algebraic operations are actually implemented by the uh, RDBMS runtime system etcetera later on in the course. Okay. Now, any questions? So, we looked at uh, in this picture, we looked at the how the database is first set up and how queries can be run on the database, right. And then what are these application programs? Application programs are uh, <coughs> to be compiled into uh, compiled application programs and then stored, so that they can be repeatedly invoked to carry out the day to day operations of the enterprise. Now, since we are repeatedly invoking these programs, we have to be very, very careful about how these programs run. They should run correctly and they should run efficiently. So, a thorough testing of these application programs is essential before we adopt them as uh, correct application programs. Now, you can, what you can see here is that once the database has been set up, it is through these uh, repeated invocations of these uh, compiled application programs that data actually gets accumulated into the database. Right. So, for example, as I was telling you about the library information system. So, uh, as day to day operations uh, keep happening, 
uh, lot of uh, issue, uh, lot of data about who has issued what book and uh, you know uh, what book is inside the library, what book is uh, not there in the library. All that you know will now uh, get uh, started rec getting recorded into the into the database here, and it currently reflects the current state of the affairs of the library, right? Okay, now let us go a little uh, a little bit more into this uh, other parts of the database management system. Now, in order to understand uh, this is transaction manager. So, in just written as trans manager, but it is transaction uh, manager. Um, I gave a brief idea about transactions earlier, but essentially a transaction is a logical unit of work that has to be done in its entirety. Okay. So, so the nature of that work is, is such that you either do it completely or do not do it at all. That is what we want, that is what we say as a, as a logical unit. Okay. So, you have to kind of the, uh, think of the whole thing as an, uh, as one atomic operation. It has to be either done completely or uh, or do not do it. For example, uh, this is best ex explained using the uh, example of a, a bank. So, if you are transferring 1000 rupees from A's account to from A's account to the B's account, it has to be done in its entirety. You cannot reduce 1000 rupees from A's account and not credit it to the B's account, right. It has to be done, otherwise uh, B would, uh, A would end up losing money and B would not get the money, the, the transaction is not complete, right. So, uh, so such kind of units are what are called transactions. Now, it is very important for the uh, uh, database uh, to to recognize these operations as atomic pieces of operations and ensure that they are run in in their entirety. Now, of course, in practice, in practice, these these programs have multiple steps in inside them. First, you have to check whether A's account has at least 1000 rupees or more, I mean at least uh, does it have the uh, required amount and then you have to reduce 1000 rupees from that fellow's uh, um, a balance and then update the balance and then uh, open uh, whatever uh, uh, B's account and add it and then store it as B's balance etcetera. There are multiple steps involved in this and a database actually might fail. The, the system that is uh, operating this whole programs might fail any time might fail any time, but then the RDBMS takes the responsibility saying that this these pieces of pro, these these things that you as declare as transactions will be run in their entirety. So, in order to do this the RDBMS has to take certain measures internally, so that in case a system failure occurs some transaction which is has just been partially done okay would not have been recorded in the database so it has to take measures like that if a transaction has been partially completed then its effect is not there in the in the database that is sitting on the on the disk okay and if some transaction has completely run and you have from your side you have given a go ahead saying that yes I have done the transfer, then whatever the required changes have to be permanently recorded in the database, right. So, all this the database has to ensure. So, in order to do that it uses what is called a log, okay. A log is uh, some system we will again have to go into the details later on. There are multiple kinds of logs that one can maintain. 
it is essentially a system where information about the updates that are being done to the database are recorded in a separate place. So, that when there is some issue of this kind where you know you have to uh, you have to either undo the operations of certain transactions or etcetera, it can be done making use of this information that is stored in the in the log. Okay. So, log is a a a some kind of a uh, mechanism or a in fact, it is a file where we will store appropriate information about the running of the transactions. So, that when there is a situation of this kind where some uh, failure has occurred and we have to come to bring the database to a consistent state, information from the log can be made use of. So, it is the recovery manager that comes into the picture when there is a uh, when there is some kind of a crash in the in the system. A recovery manager is the one that gets the control of the database system after it recovers from a crash. A crash might occur, a power might go or a disk might fail or so you may have to op stop the operations of the uh, database suddenly. So, at that time once you have restored the situation, the the, uh, the the recovery manager is the one that gets control first uh, from I mean the uh, yeah, it, it is the first one that gets the control of the whole system. And what it does is to basically uh, check as to what was the situation of the database system at the time of crash and what was the information that was stored on the log and taking all these things into consideration, it will bring the database system to a consistent state. So, that its normal operations can be resumed. Okay. So, that is the role of a, a recovery manager. Now, we also have what is called a, a, a buffer manager here. Uh, the reason is that though the, uh, okay, the, the entire data is actually stored on the disk right and the and and the data is actually stored on files as files all right so the rdbms will require to update parts of these files to reflect whatever it is doing so it has to keep on requesting uh, f uh, chunks of the files from the disk so so there is a buffer manager which will which will buffer the information on memory and then keep providing. So, you will some of you might have done the operating systems course. So, you use you have studied this paging mechanism right paging while dealing with the uh, disk systems. The disk systems are slow and so you want to uh, you want to store chunks of the uh, files into the main memory. So, that operations in the main memory can carry on, but then as operations update uh, as the uh, memory operations uh, you know uh, happen and then the these uh, information is updated, it has to be stored back into the into the database right. So, this is how. <coughs> so, it is in that context we will get what is called a a, a buffer uh, manager. Now, this is very interesting to see that uh, the RDBMS has to play some part of the operating systems role, because it has to basically implement this paging mechanism there. Okay. And we will later on study as to uh, why uh, you know it, it cannot really rely on the operating system in order to do this uh, paging mechanism. It has to have, it really needs to have a tighter control. And on how information flows from the memory buffers to the disk buffers to the disk. We will we will study it uh, as part of this transaction management and recovery module. Good. So, I suppose uh, you have got a, uh, a fair picture of what are the various uh, subsystems that are involved in a RDBMS uh, system. 
Now, the, uh, whatever I have been talking about is there in the uh, in the in the next few slides. Like what is disk uh, is storing, and then what is the DDL SQL command uh, processor will do? It creates the relation schema and the constraints. It also handles authorization and data access control. The query compiler compiles SQL queries and also update delete commands. The query optimizer selects a optimal plan for executing a query. As I was telling you, the query is represented as a relational algebraic expression. Then there is the application program compiler that preprocesses the application programs, uses the host language compiler and also integrates the compiled program with the libraries of the SQL supplied by the RDBMS. And the runtime system executes the compiled queries comp and the compiled application programs, etc. The transaction manager keeps track of, interacts with the runtime system, it keeps track of the start end of each of these units of work, the transactions and it enforces what is called concurrency control protocols. We will study them later in detail later. Basically what it mean, uh, what it stands for is that when, when multiple transactions are submitted to the RDBMS system, they have to be concurrently processed, but with the database has to ensure that at any point of time the database is in a consistent state. Then the buffer manager manages the disk space, kind of implements the mechanism, paging mechanism. The recovery manager, as I was telling you, takes control as uh, after the restart of the system after a failure and brings the system to a consistent state before it can be uh, used for normal operations. Okay. Now, let us look at briefly look at the various people that are involved, uh, what are the roles for people here. Okay. So, there are these name users or database uh, data entry operators, I was telling these are also. So, they basically use the GUI provided by the application programs, feed in the data and invoke an operation. So, these are the people who in, whom we encounter at the train reservation counters or the library issue return counter, etc. They, they invoke uh, the application programs. They do not need to have deep knowledge of the information system. They only have to know how to uh, invoke these application programs. Then we have application programmers who have to be thoroughly knowledgeable about the logical scheme of the entire uh, database and then they are the ones that are responsible for translating the functional requirements of the database into application programs. So, they have to use high level language and develop programs to handle functional requirements and meticulous testing of these programs is absolutely necessary because they will be in uh, repeatedly made use of. Then there is sophisticated users or data analysts who have a uh, good idea about complete idea about what is the database uh, structure is. They use SQL to generate answers for the complex queries. And then we have the database administrator, the DBA is also called database D DBA. DBA is responsible uh, for designing this logical scheme, creating the structure of the entire uh, database, monitor, it, monitor its usage and if necessary uh, do some performance tuning by creating necessary in the structures to, to speed up some uh, uh, application programs. And uh, this person is also uh, is very important in the sense that he, uh, he or she would grant in or revoke data access permissions for all the other users in the. So, this, this uh, has to be the very trustworthy uh, person uh, because he has complete control of the entire 
database. So, these are the various roles that people play in the information system. Good. So, with this I, we have come to the end of the introduction module of this particular course. Here are the uh, set of uh, books that you can uh, use. Uh, these slides of course, will be available to you, so that you can look it up later also. It is kind of interesting to assume uh, to observe that in the three of the four books, we have an Indian author. Shamkat Navate is from Georgia Tech, Raghu Ram Krishnan used to be at Wisconsin, Sudarshan is at, at IIT Bombay. So, all these books are available, the last book is also available as all of them as available as Indian editions. So, while, while we are talking about the various concepts in the mod, in the class, I urge you to keep reading the books. Okay. So, with that we will stop here.